Hi, welcome to the second of two videos supporting the Bottle Rocket Challenge. On page A is the Rocket Science Experiment. You'll see I've recruited the help of my two youngest children. You can find the centre of pressure easily using this method. Find some cardboard. Uh, this cardboard's fairly hard going, maybe some a bit thinner and then trace around your rocket. We're looking for a silhouette or an outline. Try to be as accurate as you can and then cut out your silhouette. Place your silhouette on a pencil. Take your time, try to find the spot where it just balances. You might need to gently push it forwards and backwards a few times. You're doing great. Now mark that point carefully because you've just found the centre of pressure. That's the midpoint that the dynamic air pressure will push on the body of your rocket. Imagine this rocket is moving towards your eye out of the page or screen really fast, but it happens to have rotated sideways. So now the airstream is pushing on that whole area or silhouette. You could find the centre of pressure using maths. You could work out the total surface area and then find the middle of that area. But the sneaky way is just to use the silhouette and then balance it with gravity and you've found the centre of pressure. Here's a question. If I added some mass or weight to the nose cone of the actual rocket model, would it change this centre of pressure? The answer is no. The centre of pressure will stay the same unless I change the shape of the rocket because it's the surface area of the silhouette that determines the centre of pressure. Watch as Ava carefully transfers the centre of pressure across to the actual rocket body. And she's marking it with a green dot. Question, did I need to make a silhouette? Could I find the centre of pressure by using the actual rocket itself to balance? I do need to make a silhouette. If we balance the actual rocket body, we're finding the centre of mass, which could be towards the front or back, depending on where we place the weight. Notice the pink dot on the rocket on the lawn. I've already found the centre of mass. Let me show you how you can do that. Either balance it on the edge of a ruler, or take a piece of string and make a loop. Pass the rocket through the loop and use that as a balance. If the string tends to slip, as it will on a short rocket like this, then you may want to hold it in place with one or even two pieces of tape. Hang the rocket and you can see the nose is actually pointed slightly downwards. So we're going to need to adjust the sticky tape until it hangs level. Cool, and that's where you put the pink dot and that's your center of mass. Check there's no one around you and then swing the rocket in a big circle. Check to see if the nose begins to point forwards this one doesn't seem to be stable at all. It's um, tumbling and flying sideways through the air. How can we explain this? Let's have a look at where the center of mass and center of pressure are. They're less than 10 millimeters apart. That accounts for why the rocket is unstable. The closer these are, the more unstable will be your rocket. Maybe your rocket flew stably the first time. If so, try trimming half the length off all of your fins and see what happens. Let's try another test. You'll see Charles taping a coin to the nose cone of his rocket. You could use some blue tack or some paper clips. Just make sure it's secure enough that it doesn't fly off. Now the rocket nose is hanging down. It's not balanced on the string. So I'll need to remove the sticky tape and rebalance using the string. When you find that new center of mass, Replace your sticky tape and your center of mass mark and let's check. Great, so that is my new center of mass. Notice the center of pressure and center of mass are further apart. How happy is Charles to have a rocket that's flying stably? Even if it starts tumbling at first, it will quickly right itself so that the nose of the rocket always faces forwards. Record the distance in millimetres separating your two centres and what sort of flight that resulted in. For test three, adjust something and see what happens. Maybe slide your fins further down if you can and then record your results. For the last test, why not make some massive fins for the back 
Here I've doubled the size of the fins for the back. Question. Will these bigger fins change the green dot or the centre of where air pressure pushes on the rocket? Yes, you may have to use the silhouette method again. The idea of this simple experiment is to try things and get a feel for what happens. For instance, if your fins are too big and heavy, the center of mass could move way down the rocket. In this case, Ava seems to have it just right. Notice how quickly the rocket moves into a stable flight. Can I say thank you to my volunteers today? Make sure you ask teacher permission before conducting experiments. Before testing a rocket, look behind you. Check that there's no one around, especially because these can be swinging at eye height. I hope you've had a great time with rocket science today. I'm Glenn. Thanks for watching. Bye.